to the beautiful country of Brazil. We are in Manaus, Brazil, where tonight some of the top fighters on the planet have converged to the Amazon, the gateway to the Amazon for Jungle Fight 3. The sights, the sounds, the beauty. But when it gets underway, get ready. It's going to be pretty violent tonight for Jungle Fight 3. Ryan Bennett, Frank Trigg, we're ready. We hope you're ready. Get ready for our first fight of the evening between Fritz and Pichel taking on Fabio Mello. I want to say a big hello to uh, Frank Trigg, my broadcast partner. Trigg, we look at this and you get a good look at Fabio Mello, three and two in his career, fighting with the Brazilian top team. And this guy fought Takanori Gomi over Bushido four. So he will not be intimidated by that man, Fritz and Paixão, who is four and one from that Gracie uh, Barra fight team. Ryan, I got to thank you very much for having me here again in the Amazon, having a good time again. I got to tell you what, this is going to be a great fight between two lightweight fighters. As always, I love the lightweight guys. You, you are completely correct. No one's going to be scared or intimidated by either one. The, both these guys are coming out here to win and prove a point that they are one of the better lightweight guys out in the world today in mixed martial arts. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens between Paixão and Melo. Nice to have you aboard right here on the Fight Network in the Amazon. And right away, Melo comes out with a high kick. Fabio Melo, we mentioned part of that legendary Brazilian top team. Some of the best fighters to come out of Brazil, part of that team. And always good to be training with that kind of quality of athletes. Paixão, last time we saw him, we saw him uh, win over uh, Roma Yaya. But, you know, he'll tell you right away, that was not his best efforts. He says he's going to be a little bit more wow. aggressive tonight, and he gets a nice takedown right away. Good job ducking that big uh, overhand hook and uh, stepping right into a double leg, drove right through to the guy right down. Excellent technique. Excellent technique. Of course, uh, trains with the Gracie Barra here in town, so he definitely is, is well-versed in the submission game. He's 4-1 and one as a professional. Only one loss in his young career, and he's looking forward to trying to make it 2-0 and oh in jungle fight. Once again, he competed in the second jungle fight beating Yaya and from Brazil as well and now the referee will stand him actually no he's just going to move him out to the center of the ring I thought he might try to stand him up but he's just going to move him away from the ropes and we're back at it Pachau and Melo Melo very good with Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well so that I mean the one thing is Trig you get two solid jiu-jitsu players they can sometimes neutralize one another, can't they? Yeah, they really can. What ends up happening between really good two submission Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, the guy that can punch better, can punch in the transition, like Pac is doing right now, is going to have a better chance of passing and remaining pass. Paixão just loading up with, with some big rights. You see the kick by Melo trying to uh, answer Paixão. Folks, we've seen fighters get knocked out from the top position. The guy on the bottom can kick him anywhere. We've seen, uh, we've seen a few knockouts in our day with the up kick. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Hedrick Gracie had a couple of knockouts when he was competing, and, uh, you know, uh, I've seen a couple of guys be the butting ends of, of uh, some of those heel kicks. It's a very, a very dangerous position. You have to be real careful here, though. Pai Xiao does uh, get around. Mello, now he's got... Oh, now he's got full mount. Here it goes. Good job. Excellent work. Slipped right into it. Good, good excellent technique. Got to be careful. Give him, him Pai Xiao his back. You don't want to do that when a guy's striking at you. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's just, he's just in a bad position. The full mount, a position you never want to be in. Pai Xiao continues to rain some punches. It'll be interesting to see what Melo decides to do. Go stop. Got to bring him back in the center. Got to get him back in the center. I want those guys going out underneath the ropes. Yeah, this is even worse for Melo now because he doesn't really have anywhere to go. And he turns around. I, mean, I guess that's the, the way to get out of it is give up your back. But when you give up your back, you can also be choked out. Yeah, that, that's true. And uh, I got to tell you what, Ryan, I have a little experience of that. So I kind of understand the, the position that he's in. You really have got to, to turn your back and then roll under. Like you almost have to tick, tick your, tuck your head between your legs and roll over when you give your back like that. And, and uh, he hasn't done it yet, and as a result, he's still kind of caught in his mouth. You know, Melo at least got a little bit of the half guard in, and now Pachau continues to rain punches, and now Pachau back to his feet. Good job. Oh, great axe kick. I, I love when Pachau does that, that technique right there. He always does a great job with it. Right in the stomach. That had to hurt Melo. Melo continues to get kicked in the legs by Pachau. And now he's trying to move around, and Melo doing a pretty, pretty decent job of keeping Pachau off balance. 
Yeah, he's doing a great job. Great work. Great motion. Great movement. You know, he's uh, he, he's really really got to move his hips just a little bit more while he's down there on the bottom. Otherwise, Pashal's going to eventually going to work his way past his guard and start raining down some more blows. Yeah, he saw him trying to wheel around and, and get him, and now jumps in. Just goes right into the guard though of Mello. You see Fabio Mello fought Takanori Gomi back at Bushido 4. He's also fought in the deep organizations in overseas and as well as Mecca. But tonight he's making his debut in Jungle Fight. It's really become the premier organization in Brazil. Yeah, it's taken over very quickly. We're on his third fight and already having the best and the best fighters in around the world competing in this. Fredson Paixão's only lost one time. Now he's got the back, and then Melo turns right back around. This is still a dangerous time for Fabio Melo. And Paixão does a great job of controlling all of his opponents. He really keeps these guys in a good position where he can strike and get, you know, keep the motion. He's really good. He always moves his hips around. If you notice that as soon as any kind of escape happens, he's right back to his feet, making sure his opponent stays down on his back. Absolutely. It looks like Melo wants to... Try to land one of those big right hands again. He's been successful in the past landing those rights. Nice low kick. We are in the first round. Nice to have you aboard for Jungle Fight 3. Seeing uh, Fredson Paixão in the red shorts battling Fabio Mello. And Mello been on his back the entire time. And they'll take a round to relax here. And in between rounds, between round one and round two. You see the ice bags now trying to revive Mello. It's a little hot, a little humid in here, Ron. I'm, I'm not really particularly used to it. I uh, can't imagine how the fighters are going through it. Great double here as you see in the replay. Pachel just ducked that hook, stepped right in, lifted him up and drove right through him. You see here, as soon as he felt, see how he, you know, Pachel stands up every time he sees his opponent moving around, get a nice shot right there of the ring card girl. A little bit different than what most people are used to seeing down here. Always dressed in traditional Amazonian garb, you know, always, always a very, very jungle oriented, everything in here. Trigg has his camera out, taking some pictures. Well, I, well I'm sorry, I was distracted. You talking about me? <laughs> Paixão getting some instruction from his quarter. Hold on, is a fight here? What? what? <laughs> you have to explain those later on. I'm telling you right now. So Paixão getting ready to start round two. He had a very good round one. That was a great round for Fritz and Paixão. Yeah, Paixão, I got Paixão winning the first round, 10-9. He did a great job, controlled the entire pace. Didn't do enough damage to get a 10-8 round, but definitely, definitely won a 10-9 round. Fabio Melo, it's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts in the second round. He was basically dominated by Paixão. Didn't have, uh, you know, very many offensive moments in that first round. No, not really. He did a little bit in the very beginning, and then Paixão just kind of really got started and overwhelmed him, and that was basically the end of his offensive bout. You know, Paixão definitely can control the entire bout, can control the entire... He's so athletic and so aggressive, he can control everything. Be interesting to see who wins the stand-up game. That could go a long way in telling who's going to win this fight. Low kick, uh, first kick landed in the second round by Mello. So Mello's going to spend a little bit more time. He's, he's stepping to his left. He needs to really walk, walk off to his right a little bit more, get away from that right hand. He's a left-handed fighter. He needs to use that straight straight left down the center. Right, Shao shot in and uh, got Mello. But he's trying to, he can't get him down yet. Both fighters working for position here. Mello trying to get the takedown. Mello doing a good job of trying to battle this off a little bit. Paixão is really, really using a lot of energy driving him into the ropes. I mean, it's, it is getting pretty heavy and pretty, pretty hard in here. But Mello has the ropes. He can kind of lean against the ropes, kind of lean against the ropes, and, and let uh, Paixão take all the, take, use all his energy to, kind of, to try to keep him there. The first fight of the evening from Jungle Fight 3. Fredson Paixão taking on Fabio Mello. And right now... It's Pashao landing those short knees to the inner thigh and got to make sure those aren't low, Trig, is you love the low blow. There is no such thing as a low blow. It's always the low abdomen. That's just, <laughs> that's just the way it works. And Paishao now trying to pick him up and throw him down. Melo's just doing a nice job. I don't know how he's not going down right now. Now he goes down. Paishao gets the double leg instead of the single leg takedown. Yeah, but Paishao did all that work, took all that time, and all he did is he ended up in the guard now. You know, my firm belief is when you end up in the guard, it's just basically like being on your feet. It's a 50-50 position. Just as much as Paishao can strike, Melo can submit. So it's really, really nothing has really changed other than uh, Paishao used a lot of energy to get there. Absolutely, Paishao. 
in the guard. Now it's the, uh, it was briefly a butterfly guard. Now Melo closes the guard. This is where we've seen a lot of the fight. This time it took a lot longer to get Fabio Melo down, but Paixão was able to get the takedown. What will he be able to do from this position? That's the question. You know, Melo's doing a really good job of trying to keep Paixão, you know, in balance a little bit. Keeps using his legs back and forth, back and forth. Playing with the head a little bit so Paixão can't sit up and try to get any action at him. It's, uh, it's definitely a difficult position, a little, you know, a little, little position he doesn't really want to be in, although he is riding out the storm a little bit. Melo's got to do some action down here. He's got to get up. He lost the first round, obviously. He's in the beginning of losing the second round, so he has to move a little bit more to try to steal this round back. Absolutely. Fritz and Paixão landing some right hands, trying to continue to force the action. And right now, you know, the referee, I'm surprised he, he doesn't stand up back up because... Hasn't been a whole ton of action here. I mean, obviously, Pashao is in the superior position, but not a whole lot of action here in the first round, or so, excuse me, the second round. And he he continues to land these short right hands. I guess that's why they're not standing it up. You know, it's, I, I guess it's because that both of these guys are such great, really good submission guys, and the ref knows that, that he's trying to let go on the ground a little bit longer. But really, at this point in the game, he should start it back up again. We're already more than halfway through the second round. He should bring it up to the feet, let him reset, and see if we can't get some striking going on. You get two guys like this that know jujitsu, you definitely don't want to stand them up for just no reason. But bottom line, they got to further their position, and right now, it doesn't look like they're doing that. It's really difficult sometimes. Refs, refs kind of forget that the, you, know, you get two guys that are so tremendous at submission, they forget that hey, this isn't a submission match. This isn't a jujitsu match. You really, this really is a fight, and part of the fight game is if, if it doesn't work within the sport of the fight, rather not, not necessarily you know regular you know outside fights, but within the sport of the fight game, you've got to bring it back up to the feet if you don't see enough action. Absolutely, both guys just grinding it out here in the second round. And not much more action. Now Pichel stands up. You know, Pichel's stand-up game, I, I don't think is that bad. I'm surprised he doesn't want to stand up a little bit more to battle Melo, but... You know, I, I really would think that, that you know, I got to agree with you, Ryan, that Pichel should just back up, let him come up, you know, but he's, gotta, he's trying to tice him up, you know, when standing right next to him. He's not going to come up when he's standing right there. You know, Pichel has to back off a little bit, make him come to his feet. Let's start, let's start to work this out. You know, he's getting a little creative with some of his kicks, but the reality of it is he really needs to let Melo back up on his feet and, and start bagging this out because I think, you know, Paixão could really do some damage. Well, that's the end of round two. The judges will have a tough time scoring that because I don't even know how to score that fight. That was uh, a long, drawn-out round. All right, time for round three. Still anybody's fight here between Fritz and Paixão and Fabio Melo and... Mellow part of that Brazilian top team, Paixão, Gracie Barra. Well, you know natural what, rivalry between those two schools. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just hoping that, uh, you, you know, it's, it's still anybody's fight here. I'm just hoping that someone's going to start the fight this third round because really in that second round, it seemed like both fighters took the second round off to kind of recover a little bit from the first, and nothing really happened. Both these guys are going to step this action up a little bit. Yeah, the crowd's been uh, yelling and screaming for these guys to get it on and fight. Let's see if they can do so here. Third and final round, Fabio Mello. Taking on Fritz and Paixão. Metal, of course, in the black trunks. Paixão in the red. Paixão is a little more action right now. Finally starting to get his kicks going a little bit. You know, he definitely has got to be more aggressive. They're both kind of standing in the center of the ring. No one's really committing to anything. I don't, I don't know if it's a mutual respect for each other or, you know, if, if there's something else going on. I'm not really sure. But neither one of them seems to be aggressive at all. Even the ref is telling them they got to start fighting. <laughs> you see that? The referee telling them to mix it up. I mean... Folks paid a lot of money for a fight, and they're just not seeing one right now, unfortunately. There's a takedown by Paixão. Another, and, another and great job by Paixão. Right to the mount. Yeah, excellent, now, excellent. now we get to finally see something here. Paixão in the mount. We saw this early in the first round. Melo did a nice job of escaping, and Paixão now. He'd love to finish him in this position, and Melo continues to move back and forth, but he does give up his back. Can Paixão capitalize and try to land a rear naked choke gonna be very hard to do Melo once again part of that Brazilian uh, top team that they they, uh, they know how to train for this and they know how to get out of tough positions like this it'll be interesting to see if Fabio Melo knows how to do it 
And, and for that matter, Fritz and Paisel can apply submissions. That's the other side of it. Yeah, that's true. It's a good transfer, you know, tr trying to work his triangle lock. Now we're going to see what what's going to happen in this position. We finally got a switch. It felt finally different than we've seen the rest of the fight. Let's see how those two guys can work. I want to see Paisel's hips moving a little bit. I want to see Melo trying to sit up a little bit and start banging them out. Because really, otherwise, the, the ref's not going to have any choice but to try to stand these guys back up and make them, make them commit more action on their feet. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Melo can do it. Like you said, this is the first time we've seen Fabio Melo in this position where it's Paisel on his back. Paisel just doing a nice job of tying up Melo. All the different camera angles we got here from Jungle Fight 3 and the Amazon and the beautiful city of Manaus. Melo, the, the, the thing's going to be frustrating for the Brazilian top team corner. Melo just isn't pushing any action. I mean, I know Paisel's doing some pretty good things in defense, but Melo has no offense at all for him. Yeah, he's not setting up. He's not trying to swing. He's not trying to pass. He's really not trying to do anything at all other than just basically he's content to be on top. You know, and that, that doesn't necessarily win win fights. Uh, if, if it was drawn out and if you, if you were absolutely positively sure that you won the first two rounds, then maybe you could hang out the third round. But he hasn't done anything in the first two rounds either. And all of a sudden now he's on top. He's still not doing anything. It doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. Continues to grind it out. And, and you're right. When, when you're behind, you really got to push the action. Right now, I don't know if Melo's tired or what it is, but, you know, once again, Paisha's doing a nice job of tying up the hands, but you're in this position. you got to move forward. you gotta, you got to be the aggressor. Fritz and Paisha has just shut down anything that Fabio Melo's even tried. Third and final round between Fabio Melo and Fritz and Paisha. It hasn't been the fight we expected to be. They're definitely taking their time, you know, doing all this motion. They're really not, uh, really not doing much. Yeah, I would have anticipated them doing a little bit more work. A little, you know, both these guys are lightweight guys. They usually have a lot more action than this, uh, they're, and they're really not really showing to me that, that they're shutting each other down. You know, they're just just not getting started. They're just not moving quite a bit. Paisel slowly but surely kind of working those legs up the body of Mello. Would love to land a triangle choke or submission. And right now the referee, he's been letting a lot of this action to go. And I, I think the referee has got to be held accountable for not standing these fights up either. I mean, you've you got to be able to have these guys press the action. And Trig, you know, Jungle Fight has done a great job the first few times we've been here with the referees. But I think this one, the referees allowed it to be this slow. Yeah, really. He just needs to stand it up, bring it back up to the feet, force them to work. And if 10, 15 seconds, they're not really showing a lot of action, you bring them back up again. Just keep making them stand back up again. Eventually someone's going to do something. Fabio Mello and Fritz and Paisiao, and it's Mello been in this position for a couple minutes now. Now he finally lands a left-right combination, and then Paisiao pulls him close. Mello now working the body, and that's it. Wow. Well, the judges got their work cut out for him. They got to figure out who scored and who it's going to. There wasn't much scoring in this fight, so it's going to be interesting to see how the judges score it. You see both fighters salute one another, go congratulate each other's corners. Excuse me, a quick round while I go get a beer. <laughs> Feel free, Trey, go ahead. Go, go, do, go do what you, I'll, I'll let you know who wins this fight, all right? <laughs> well, I tell you what, some people probably did that during the fight. I mean, it's no other way to say it. You see the takedown early by Pashal couple rights and lefts, but for the most part, not a whole lot going on. And you see, Paisel had the mount a few different times, did not be able to, to do anything with it. Takedowns. Decisão dos jurados, unânime. Fredson Paisel. Well, you heard your winner, Fredson Paisel. It was not a thing of beauty, but the bottom line, a win is a win. He beats Fabio Mello tonight in Jungle Fight 3. Time for Masihiro Kakahara taking on Rocky Romero. Yeah, my name is Rocky Romero. I'm from the USA. I'm 21 years old, um, 5'6", 175 pounds. Um, I've been a pro wrestler for six years now. Um, I've also trained in jiu-jitsu and amateur wrestling and kickboxing for the last two years. 
So it's a big deal for me coming out to the Jungle Fight in such a big stage. Instead of doing it in a small stage, the whole world is pretty much watching uh, the Jungle Fight, especially the third one. It's a really big card, probably the biggest card that they've had. Well, this should be an entertaining battle because you got two former pro wrestlers uh, going at it, and Masahiro Kakihara from New Japan Pro Wrestling. And sure, something we found out about the pro wrestlers that have tried to cross over to MMA. It's always the guys from New Japan that seem to have a huge advantage over the guys from the pro wrestling ranks in America. Yeah, absolutely. New Japan has a stronger style. They really hit, they really punch, they really submit. So it makes things a lot harder for the American style, which doesn't do much. It's more acrobatic. Uh, the New Japan guys, really, it's, they're just one step away from being in a full fight every time they go out there to, to do their act in the, in the ring. All right, so here we go. Rocky Romero, 175 pounds, taking on Masahiro Kakihara, who's uh, really the bigger fighter. He's at one, almost 190. So Rocky Romero's got a little work to do because, as I mentioned, Kakihara right around that 185, 190 weight mark. Right now, Romero just kind of circling around, just trying to get a feel of what Kakihara can bring. Both fighters exchange some kicks. Romero lands another kick. Kakihara, you, you can feel the power he has. Romero's quick, but he does not generate the power that Masahito Kakihara generates. Yeah, at all. I mean, it, Kakihara is just amazing. He's got great kicks, great striking. He definitely has that, that good swing, and, and Rocky's got to step up the pace a little bit. Otherwise, he, you know, he, he's not going to hit him as hard, so he has to hit him more often. Rocky Romero, part of the L.A. Dojo, and now he gets the back of uh, Kakihara. Can he climb and get that? Can he climb and get that rear naked choke? That'd be oh, great. Oh, right about that? He sneaks up there and he is trying to get it, trying to lock it on. I don't think he's in the position to do so. And Kakihara just trying to turn into the body of Romero. And now you see Kakihara get out of it. Romero in the guard now. Good move by Rocky Romero, but could not lock in the choke. And right now you see Kakihara just trying to get out of the guard, and look how quick he is. Oh, nice pass. Well, now he's passed it. Now he's in side control, side mount. And here Romero, this is a place he does not want to be. I mean, taking some punches. He may be able, be able to hit him with some knees here in this position. Great job. Good work. You know, good work by Kyle. He's definitely keeping him tight, keeping him pinned underneath. Rocky's in a precarious position. Definitely needs to try to turn himself in. Oh, he's got a knee mount on, Kakihara does now. It's going to be very difficult for Rocky to get out of this. Yeah, Rocky's in a lot of trouble. Horrible position to be in. And now it uh, looks like, I was going to say, Kakihara, I don't know if it's going to work for uh, arm triangle or not, but now he's got the arm. Oh, Rocky's showing a little strength right there because he's definitely just powering out of it. You only got one arm. All you're doing really is just powering yourself out of it. He's got the arm. He's trying to keep it in between his legs so he can tighten the side headlock here. Oh, wow. Good nice exchange. Roll. Wow. Yeah. Good roll with Kakihara. He saw Rocky Romero rolling. He just rolled with him. Rocky Romero. God, that's pretty tight, too. He needs to pop his head out if he can. Masahito Kakihara is kind of cranking the side of the head right now of Rocky Romero. And does this do anything tricky? I mean, does it, does it, is it more bothersome or? It's more, it's more bothersome than anything else in, in my personal opinion. It's, just, it's really hard. And the thing is, Kakihara, he's really not throwing any punches here. He's really just kind of trying to play a submission game. And, and so it's not really going to, going to cause much to happen. Uh, as long as you can stay, you know, stay calm. Don't panic so much. You'll be fine down there. See, Rocky Romero, you know, he, he cannot do much right now. He's just in a bad position. Kakihara has a little bit more weight. And he's using it to his advantage. Yeah, that's for sure. And you, can, you can see him trying to, you know, impose his will, sort of, so to speak. And he's always driving in, always using his weight on him. You know, Rocky's got a lot of weight to deal with. He's really got to move his hips, move his legs to get himself out of this position. Absolutely. You see it. Rocky Romero, at least, has got a close guard now. Kakihara being patient, trying to bide his time. I thought that time he might try to backdoor his way out, but Rocky Romero now looks like he was trying to set up for an armbar. Wow, good job. So obviously Rocky Romero spent some time in the training room, and oh, now geez. he's trying to lock in a, a choke here. Wow, almost had a triangle choke in there. Good job on Rocky. Oh, put himself in a weird position. Oh, no, now he went right into a heel hook, it looks like. 
Oh, Rocky Romero, he needs to get out of this. You do not want to be in this position. Kakihara is still looking for it. Trying to grab the, the heel, Rocky's the got, ankle. And... Rocky's got to kick his legs out. He's just kind of content to have his legs cut in. He's really got to kick his feet out of this position. Rocky right now, he's he's got to get his leg out. He's He's got to get it out. He's got actually got both legs trapped now. Now he's got one out, but now one in, and he's still... Oh, bad position. It's not a good position for Rocky. He's not going to reverse heel hook, crossbody heel hook. This is... Oh, man, that's going to be a lot. He's got to get out of it. Oh, man, he's got it tight. He's got it tight. Romero's trying to pull it out. Can he get his foot out? He's in a lot of trouble now. Rocky Romero trying to get his foot out. And Kakihara trying to finish the oh. fight, and he did so. He that's, it. Anybody. that's it. Wow. Ouch. Wow. You see how that leg came out? It looked kind of like a, a heel hook, but you see, as you mentioned, he kind of reset it. Wow. Went from a heel hook, and as he rotated out, Rocky was trying to get himself out of it. He rolled all the way over it, straight into a knee bar. That was a great job. That was a great job. Good transition from submission to submission. Obviously, you can see Rocky's very disappointed. You know, he thought he was, he was actually getting himself into that bout. He was kind of overwhelmed in the beginning, was getting back into it, and then Kakihara turned right around and got that, uh, got that reverse heel hook. Give you a look here. He had the side headlock early on, but a little bit later would have the heel hook, and he would exchange that. We'll give you another look at it here. Masahito Kakihara. And you hear the winner. The winner, Masahito. Masahito Kakihara, very impressive. Would later get the heel hook. Change it to the leg, and look at this. I'm scared. Tap out while you can. More coming up right after this on the Fight Network. It's time for our next fight. Bibiano Fernandez and Luis Figueroa. Hi, uh, my name is Luis Figueroa. I'm 145 pounds, uh, 5 feet 4 inches, and um, I'm from USA. My expectation, and I think we're going to put on a good show. Just because we're smaller guys, and smaller guys tend to move more and be more technical. So I think no matter what, which way it goes, it's going to be a good fight. And Drink, that's what we love about the smaller fighters. They are technical. They are cat quick, aren't they? Yeah, there's going to be a lot of action in this fight, especially these little guys. A lot of explosion, a lot of quick quickness. You know, hopefully this fight will, uh, will uh, please us all the way through to the third round. Well, Figueroa says it's going to be fireworks. He expects quick things from the beginning. Let's see what happens. And right away, you see Fernandez shooting in. Figueroa, pretty decent sprawl, and tries to follow with a knee. He's got some pretty good head mo movement by Figueroa, too. It looks like he's got a little, little more boxing skill than, than the last time. And Fernandez making it clear what he wants to do. He gets the takedown, already moving to side mount. Now he's oh. got his back already. This could be quick. Oh, no. And now he's got a rear naked choke. Bad news for Figueroa. Figueroa in a lot of trouble now. Oh, he's got it locked in. Oh, this is about over, folks. He's got it sunk in already early in this first round. What's he going to do? He can... He's trying to get, oh, that's there it, is, forget yeah. about it. I was going to say, he's trying to move the arms out of the way, but when you get it locked in and you're in that position, Trick, there's no way out. Yeah, I have a little bit of experience with this. <laughs> They're, uh, he, he, turned, he turned the wrong way. Uh, when a guy gets on your back like that, you have to turn into him. You have to try to face him. He turned away from him, gave him his back. It's very easy for a guy, even with minimal submission skills, to, to go ahead and, uh, and uh, tap you out in that position. So the Brazilian, we heard a lot of great things about him, and you see why. It was clear he wanted to get the takedown. He eventually secured it. And Trick, he uh, got his back. Yeah, what I like especially about this is they took him down. He took him down, passed his guard immediately, did it on one fell motion. You see here at the, at the finish here with the rear naked choke. It's already sunk in deep. There's really no hope for Figueroa at this point. Yeah, he, he, he was locked in. I mean, he wanted to turn around and try to get to his body, but there was no way he could get out. Bibiano Fernandez. Fernandez for knockout. Looking very impressive here in the Amazon. He's your winner tonight in Jungle Fight 3. 38 seconds. Our next fight, Carlos Lima taking on Tony D'Souza. Drake, you know Tony D'Souza pretty well. A former UFC veteran has wins in UFC 31 and 32, defeated Steve Berger as well as Paul, Paul Rodriguez. Only loss in the octagon was to Hataro Nakao, and he's a pretty well-rounded well fighter, isn't he? Yeah, I spent a lot of time. He's actually a two-time All-American uh, in Division I wrestling as well. Great amateur background. 
uh, went back to Peru to visit with his family. And uh, actually, guys in America haven't seen him in a real long time because of that. He went back to take care of his family. And well, it's a real pleasure to see him again here at the Jungle Fight. Good takedown on Carlinos Lima. Lima now 3-1. and one. His only loss was to Alan Goez. And that happened in his last fight. He's fought a lot in the uh, Mecca organization. And this is his first time fighting in Jungle Fight. You know, he's got a, got a pretty good game against Tony. Keeping his knees up. Tony's one flaw is, is that uh, he does tend to get over-aggressive. He's very, very strong, though, so it's very hard to submit him, but he always gets a little bit over-aggressive, and that's what happened when he, in his loss in the cow, that uh, he got over-aggressive when he was on top and, and got caught in a couple different submissions that he didn't get caught in the submission as far as tapping. He got caught and wasn't able to get out of him and uh, move anymore and get, kept getting hit, so the, the cow kept winning the rounds. All right, so the referee will stand him up. Actually, he's going to move him to the center to get away from the ropes. So to Sousa and Lima. Moving back over, and you mentioned that fight with Tataro Nakia. You're right. He just—it was one of those fights where I almost think he was—he was bored. He just kind of lost focus, and then Nakia surprised him with that big left hand and knocked him out. It was very interesting to see, but he, that, that's why it's so important. You got to stay focused at all times in this MMA game. And Tony D'Souza, after Lima got up for a half second, it's D'Souza going right back after it. You know, it's—it's uh, it's very difficult sometimes to, to ma maintain your focus the entire event, especially with. Uh, Someone that you seem to be dominating, seem to be holding on to the whole time, and uh, you know, Tony D'Souza has that has that habit. It may have it. Uh, hopefully, it won't happen again to him this evening. D'Souza, veteran of MMA, been around for many many years now, and he's uh, eight and two as a professional, looking to improve on that record against Carlos Lima. D'Souza now in the north south position, going with knees to the head. That's never good. And moves over to the side, and there he is again with that knee on the head. His knees, he can only take so many of those before you get split open or knocked out. Yeah, it's, de it's devastating to be underneath somebody like that taking these, you know, over and over again. D'Souza, you know, he's, he's in, a, in a good position, but he almost doesn't seem to know what, where, where to go from here. I guess he's, he's patient he's more than anything, but he lands a few more knees now. I guess that's the best position for him to be in is using the knees to his advantage. Well, when Tony Souza used to train in the United States, he used to train at uh, John Lewis's Academy in Las Vegas, and he, all, everyone that ever wrestled him or ever competed with him in any kind of submission, so the one thing about Tony is he is overwhelming. So even when you're underneath him, he always feels like he's all over you. He's holding you in every position. You don't ever really feel like you have any, any space to move. And it makes it very difficult uh, for someone like Lima, who's not used to that kind of strength and power when he's on top of him, to be able to get around to, to, to get any space. D'Souza sitting up now, trying to land some, uh, some blows. As Lima does a good job of getting D'Souza back into the guard. The referee watching very closely. Trying to make sure both fighters don't go through the rope, but now we'll stop them and move them back to the center. Good job on the ref this time. You know, keep, keep the action moving by getting them back in the center. Lima always seems to be already, you know, checking his nose, checking his mouth. He doesn't seem like to be getting hit a little too much by Tony. It's it, a uh, little, little confusing to me. I mean, he obviously has some, has some fight records, has actually competed, and as you know, he's, he's used to getting hit. Um, I don't know if Tony's got a little bit more power than what he's used to, or if he's hitting from a strange position, he just got caught and didn't see it coming. Yeah, I, I think that's the latter. I think I think at the beginning of this fight, he, he did get caught, and now he's, you know, I don't know if he's still seeing SARS or what, but he did get caught early. And now D'Souza trying to get through the guard. He continues to go moving uh, counterclockwise here. Good job on Tony D'Souza. Oh, good job. He's trying to step over, get that full mount. Didn't happen. Now he can get past the guard. Tony D'Souza always thinking, always moving. And Carlos Lima, he hasn't been able to mount any offense yet. They're really nice. Doing a real good job of defense, but it's all he's been doing. Oh, wow. Trying to roll over. Oh, okay, he gave up his back. Now he gets up. Nice job by Lima. Shows his strength there. Wow. Good job. Good hip motion. You know, finally got his stuff together. Finally got moving around. Did a good job of getting himself out of that position. Yeah, he, he kind of gave up his back for a half second. I saw that, you know, we were both concerned that he might get choked out. You never want to give your back up to a guy like D'Souza, but he was able to uh, stand up and get back up. Yeah, Tony is so strong and so slick that if he gets uh, just even a little piece of, piece of a submission, he can definitely pull it in. You see right now, Lima can just happy to kick him and continue to kick him with those low leg kicks. Hoping they take its toll. And now your referee, by the way, we should mention is Mr. Braga, doing a good job as always. We saw him fight in the first couple jungle fights, and he's your referee for this fight. 
It's always good to have a guy that uh, does have, have such a great reputation as a fighter in the sport turn around and give back to the sport by being a ref for these events. I mean, it's as a, as a, a, a huge, legitimate credibility when a ref is yelling at you, you tend to pay attention because he's been there himself before as well. Absolutely. Ebenezer Braga, a heavyweight, fighting in the heavyweight division in Jungle Fight. And Lima and D'Souza ending round one. Tony with a little showboating there at the end. Not uh, open his mouth up, kind of taunting him, trying to get it, trying to get Lima to move a little bit. Did a, did a good job, just a little bit too late. You know, if he did about 35, 45 seconds earlier, it would have been a lot better. You see the opening takedown by D'Souza. Just drops Lima right on his back. Good bear hug, good step through. You know, normal, normal wrestling position. This is the thing where Tony is so devastating. He gets up on top, he can start raining down these blows. We saw the knees come into play a little bit later. Knees were very effective and see it once again. But Lima did a nice job. I don't, I mean, you see the strength he has. He was just able to overpower to Susan and get out of it. Getting ready for the next round here, Tony D'Souza just visiting with his corner, talking with his corner. As we get set for round two between Carlos Lima taking on Tony D'Souza here in Jungle Fight 3. If you're Lima, what, what, do you, what do you tell him in his corner, Trig? Every time you see Tony start to lower his level, you got to throw a quick short knee, a, sh a short kick. Try to catch Tony coming in on, on, his, uh, on his takedowns. And you got to keep busy. You got to start using that jab out there. You got to start using that foot out there. and make, make Tony respect your hand speed a little bit. Make Tony respect your stand-up game a little bit more. Yeah, we haven't seen uh, a whole lot of stand-up, but right now we're seeing that. Looks like Lima can have some pretty decent kicks and some pretty decent power. And look at D'Souza just shoot right in, trying to take Lima down. And now he's got him down again. Wow. Tony D'Souza showing how good his wrestling really is. Good job on Tony. He definitely still has that double A takedown patented. You know, he's been doing it for years and years. Did a great job with it when he was in college, and obviously it's transferred for, transferred for him into MMA. The thing I like about the, the most is that it automatically puts him by the guard every time he takes somebody down. He's already trying to pass, and that, that's, the, that's the best thing to do. You've got to get that transition, take down right to a pass. And right now he's trying to get the full mat, wow. and he puts on a choke. Was that a wow. front choke? Yeah, he had a, he had a triangle choke. It didn't look very tight. It, I mean, it looked like it was kind of loose and he, as he stepped over. Got, he sunk it in a little bit deeper. Good job for Tony D'Souza. That is, um, from the angle, you couldn't even see it. You saw him switch his position, and it looked like he was going for the full mount. Oh, I can't wait to see it again in the replay. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. I mean, Tony did a great job. It looked so loose. It didn't look like it was even dangerous at all. You can see it here, he's going to kind of go ear to ear. He's going to put his left ear on, on Lima's right ear and, and try to lock it up a little bit. He sunk it in, and now as he starts to swing his body through, you see his head come up. That makes it tighter and tighter. It looked very loose to me in our position. All of a sudden, he started sliding his knee across, and he cinched it up. Wow. So, Tony D'Souza, very impressive. Hey, Trick, there was no ring rust. We thought we might see some ring rust from D'Souza. There was none at all. Yeah, I know. Tony's been out of the game for a little while. He's you know, been down to, you know, down to South America again. And, you know, he looked great. It was absolutely amazing, his, his style. That, you know, looks a little looks a little out of shape body-wise, but obviously mentally he's doing, he looks fine and everything's doing very well for him. But he's still got that technique. He's still got that dominant fashion. And Trig wants to get a different look here. I know. I love how he just, you know, right now, the whole point of this is for Tony to get his ear onto his opponent's ears. You see him throw a little knee there to, to kind of cinch it up and make his opponent move a little bit. You know, when, when Lima's on the bottom. He's in a really, really bad position. Once Tony slides that knee across, he can finish it up very tightly. Well, it's been a while, but Tony D'Souza shows he's still got it. He's your winner tonight. Jungle Fight 3 on the Fight Network. It's time for our next fight. Bobby Hoffman ready to go. Bobby Hoffman fighting out of Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu. I'm from L.A., Los Angeles, California. Um, six foot two, 250 pounds. I've been down in Beverly Hills Jiu-Jitsu with uh, my new sensei, Marcus, and I've been training some Brazilian submission holds. Not more or less how to throw, uh, to throw them, but more or less how to get out of them and prevent them from being thrown on me. So yes, I'm, I'm very prepared for this fight, and uh, may have my opponent be as prepared as I am. Well, he's going to have to be prepared because he's facing Leopoldo Montenegro, a gentleman who is very good on the ground. He can choke you out from any any position, anywhere, anytime. He has a nice win over Mark Schultz in the last jungle fight, so it's going to be an interesting battle between Bobby Hoffman and Leopoldo Montenegro. Hoffman's got to watch out for the ground because that's where he can dominate fighters. 
Trig, we saw Bobby Hoffman last time, and he had a tough, tough loss, and Leopoldo Montenegro coming off a tough win. You know, Hoffman had a tough loss and a lot longer hair, too, last time we saw him. He uh, just, just wasn't in shape that last fight. Hopefully he got a little better shape for this fight. He seems to be a little bit more fit, but we'll find out how he does, uh, uh, sp you know, spiritual-wise, kind of when he get in here, because he started getting panicked, and he started getting a little worried about how the fight's going. He tend to tighten up, and that can uh, factor into your conditioning as well. Monty Negro split a couple fights in jungle fight. In his last fight, he actually got picked up by Travis View with one arm and basically slammed on his head. So he wanted to get back in and fight as soon as possible, and he's doing so against Bobby Hoffman. Hoffman so strong, Leopoldo Montenegro is so good with submissions. And right away, Hoffman on his back. You know, it's not, not too surprising, but uh, Bobby needs to move a little bit. You know, Bobby sometimes at the very beginning of the fight, he comes up pretty strong, but he really doesn't have his feet underneath him yet. And he kind of hasn't really found that warm-up point yet. You give him a couple more minutes, he'll be a little bit more warm. But uh, he, he needs to move a little bit on the bottom. Last time we saw him fight, he tended not to move at all on the bottom, and that's what cost him the fight. They'll move this fight to the center of the ring. Bobby, of course, wanted to stand up, but the ref says, no, we're going back right in the position you were at. So they will move uh, Montenegro over to Bobby Hoffman. Bobby right now trying to use those open, well, he was using open fist, now he's using closed fist to rattle the ears of Montenegro. No, it's good tactic when you got a guy laying on top of you like that because it tends to bother him if you box him around the ears. He lift the head up a little bit and you can get a good strike in. Now Bobby oh, Hoffman job. back to his feet. Good job of Bobby Hoffman. Did a good job getting back to his feet. A kick misses. He sprawls pretty well. Montenegro. Yeah, yeah. How, about, how about Bobby going around, around his back? I thought he might try to uh, maybe get a choke. There he goes. Oh. And now he gets just pushed off. Wow. Good job of Montenegro. It really kept his arm on uh, Bobby's leg, followed his leg all the way around, and when he got to a good position, sat up underneath him a little bit. And basically, he just like you said, Ryan, just basically shoved him off. And now Montenegro trying to uh, work his way around Big Bobby Hoffman, fighter that's been around for many, many years. And Montenegro, a newcomer to the sport. He lost a tough one when we mentioned to Travis View, but did win his first jungle fight by submission. And now wow. in the full mount, Hoffman doing everything he can to try to get Montenegro off him. That was great technique by Montenegro to get to that mountain. And, Bobby, and he did. Yeah, great. Good job by Bobby to go ahead and sweep this, sweep this position. Good job. Hoffman landed some big right hands. Wants to land some elbows. Now slapping across his body. He cannot let his... He's, he's got to be careful, though, because Montenegro, if he can see a free arm and get back into the guard, he can do some damage. And Bobby Hoffman continues to... Land some huge right hands. Wow. That one was great. That was right on target. Another one on target. Oh, and then he goes right into a almost a triangle choke attempt by Montenegro. Hoffman, though, continues to land the right hands. And Montenegro just continuing to look for anything. Now he's got Bobby Hoffman's leg. Jeez, Bobby Hoffman's in really, Montenegro is so slick. Bobby Hoffman has to worry the entire time he's fighting about every single submission position he could possibly be in. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to go for an ankle lock, and now he goes right into a triangle choke. Oh Montenegro has got a triangle choke on Bobby Hoffman. Hoffman's in huge trouble, and that's it. Forget about it. Wow. Jeez. And Hoffman just went right into it. He, he was scrambling for position, and you mentioned how slick Montenegro is. He could have slapped that triangle choke on him. He just rolled from one position to the next. He rolled over, missed, missed the toe, missed the uh, knee bar, missed the toe hole, missed the ankle lock, rolled right over into a triangle lock. Just amazing to change his position like this. You see you the scramble. You see him right here rolling over all of a sudden, boom. Here comes the triangle lock. He takes a moment to set it in, goes ahead, grabs a hold of Bobby's head, pushes his hips forward, and that's it. Bobby's got a tap. Wow, great job and great win for Leopoldo Montenegro. Leopoldo Montenegro! He is your winner. You see the sold-out crowd very happy to see their very own from Brazil get another win here tonight in Jungle Fight. Trig, I tell you what, this kid continues to impress. We, we mentioned how impressive his victory was over Mark Schultz. Once again, another huge win this time over Bobby Hoffman. I got to tell you what, this kid gets better and better every time. And, and Bobby, with his, with his wrestling background, of course, coming from the state of Iowa, spent a lot of time in the wrestling circuits when he was in high school. Uh, you would have thought he would have did a better job in getting rid of the single, as you can see. You know, he just, Montenegro just picks him up and throws him down on his back. And here at the end, we see him swing across into the, into the triangle again. But it's just, he's just so strong. He's so quick. It's amazing to watch this guy fight. Indeed. He's got another win. Notched it up here at Jungle Fight 3. What's next? We'll find out right after this. Time for our next fight. George Patino taking on Boris Johnston.
good look at John Stomp Pintrigo. We've seen him before. The Frenchman, good kickboxer, loves to bring the action. Yeah, great hands, great feet. It's going to be a good fight between him and Makako. Makako's definitely going to stand right in front of him and start to swing as much as he can. Not scared either one of these guys to stand on their feet and swing. Of course, Makako has the advantage if it does go to the ground. He is, he is versed in submission, although he doesn't use it very well. Uh, John Stomp definitely will stand in front and try to throw bombs and, and use, his, use the French style of kickboxing this, for this fight. Makako so impressive against Jack Array. Knocked him out with a big right hand, and we'll see what he can do against a very accomplished kickboxer and Boris John Stomp. See John Stomp, the taller fighter, pretty quick as well. But Makako, he can knock you out. I mean, Jack Array found that out with a big right hand. Yeah, that's true. And John Stop has got amazingly fl fine knees, you know, good motion. Of course, he's got that uh, that uh, uh, traditional style of Muay Thai from France that that he uses so well. But definitely not going to be not a good position for him on the ground with uh, Patino getting that takedown. Yeah, absolutely. Makako takes his fight straight to the ground against the kickboxer from France. Very accomplished kickboxer. He's done some great things in the sport of kickboxing, but we'll find out what he can do in the sport of mixed martial arts. Yeah, so I'm interested to see how he does in this position. You know, Makako's not the best submission guy down here, but definitely strong. Definitely put a hurting on if you want to stay down here. John Stop's got to let go of that head and start to maneuver himself out of this. Ebenezer Braga, of course, is our referee for this one tonight. Makako continues to work those short elbows to the leg of John Stop. And Makako here wants to get his head free so he can see what's going on a little bit better. And John Stop continues to make it difficult for him to do so. There he goes, got it through. Oh, Patino, or uh, John Stump's gotta be careful now because Patino's gonna get over to his mount. Now he's in, oh, he's in a real bad man. position. Yeah. This is a bad position. Makako gets the full mount. Boris John Stump is in some trouble here. And now here comes Makako. Mark, oh, now John Stump gives up his back. And now Makako trying to put the rear naked choke in. Oh, good job on John Stump. Turn him back in and kind of defend that rear naked choke. I should take a lesson from that. Good job. He moves back in, as you mentioned, and Makako looks like he wants to try to set up a big knee or two. He's right there in that position. He could, he could do it very easily with that left leg of his. He wants to start raining down, push push John Stump's head down. Yeah, John Stump in just in a bad position here. He's trying to defend a hand. Now he's trying to defend a knee. Back to the punches here. Nice job by Makako mixing it up now. Makako back into the mount. Boris got out of there one time. Can he do it again? Takes another shot, trying to pull him in, and here he goes back in the full mount. Gives up his back. Makako, though, is not going to take his back. He's just going to try to pound on him. Boris, back into him. Good job. Excellent work. I can tell you what, Boris moved pretty well in the bottom for guys not very familiar with this position. Obviously, spent some time down here training in between the, the last couple of fights we've seen on him. Boris is doing a lot better job. Camaro's coming in and doing a good job of straightening his arm out to kind of defend it. Yeah, John Stop just been very much on the defensive so far against Makako. Makako trying to crank the arm. Oh, nice job by John Stop to get to his feet. How about that? Wow, good work, good work. Weather the storm down there, you know, and he can still has enough time left to steal this round. Wow, impressive job by Boris John Stop in a world of trouble and somehow escaped. John Stump, we mentioned he's an accomplished kickboxer, but you can tell he spent plenty of time on the ground training for this fight. Yeah, absolutely. He's a great, has a great position. You know, John Stump's in a lot better, a lot more patient than we've seen in the past in the bottom. He's done, a, he's done excellent work, excellent work in getting out of that. Both guys now circling, and John Stump would love to land some of his kicks and some punches here. But, you know, the problem with kicking is you can get taken down. I remember talking with Chuck Liddell, and a lot of people were asking uh, Chuck Liddell, the UFC champ, why he would continue to to high kick and or why he wouldn't continue to high kick and he just mentioned that was the reason why because he did not want to get taken down he had a lot of power in his hands and he said every once in a while he would kick but he didn't want to kick too much because his opponent would try to take him down yeah you gotta, i gotta admit i gotta agree with you you know i'm not as proficient as uh, as chuck is at, at kicking and I, i'm not a big opponent of kicking either until later in the rounds when the guys are tired and you can kind of time it better so boris john stomp and Makako battling it out. Right now, not, nothing really landed. This is where John Stump wants to be, but he's not very aggressive. There's a high kick that somewhat blocked by Makako. John Stump 
needs to get busy here. This is what this is where he wants to fight, but he's not doing anything. Lukaku tries to land that big right hand. That's the one he landed against Jacare. Yeah, he steps in, good good bear hug, you know, trying to try to take this to the ground. Just a good time defense, good job on defense right there. Yeah, he's been a very good defensive fighter. Now he's trying to pound on Makako, and Makako needs to get up. He's in a bad spot here. John, oh, how about that reversal? That was quick. Excellent work by Makako. Tremendously strong down here, definitely. That's the end of a uh, very entertaining first round between Makako facing Boris John Stump. Now Makako will have to uh, try to regroup here in the second round. He actually had a very good first round, but he's got to be surprised because there was a lot of positions he had that were very advantageous that he wasn't able to capitalize on. Yeah, he's got to do a better job of getting in the spots and finishing this fight off. You know, Makako did a good job. You know, you can see him here in the mount. He had John Stomp's back. He was giving it to him, but didn't even attempt to do any kind of submission. He was trying to rain down on the guy. You got to remember, John Stomp's a Muay Thai guy. He's used to getting hit. Did a good job here trying to switch off this Kimura, but John Stop, as you can see here, threw a couple of knees to Makako's head and rolled himself out of it. Very impressive first round, actually for both fighters for that matter. John Stop with the escapes, Makako with some great positioning, and let's see what happens here in the second round. Makako and John Stop. Referee Braga sends them back to their corners. Now he's ready to go, touch of gloves, and we're underway for round two. See Braga over there in the corner hanging out, just watching the fight. <laughs> well, these guys came to fight, and that makes it a lot easier on the referee, where some of the other fights a little bit slower and took a while for them to get into it. Right now, Makako giving John Stump a lot of respect. You see the quick kick, that's one of the reasons why. John Stump very accomplished in kickboxing. This is the way he would love to have it as a stand-up fight. But Makako. I'm sure once again we'll try to take this down to the ground. And John Stump's got to take advantage of this. Makako's just standing still. He's just standing right there in front of him. He's got to lower his level a little bit and start swinging at him. Got, you know, so the only way he's going to mix it up is by throwing the punches at him. Yeah, he doesn't want to get taken down, but if you're not kicking or not standing, then your stand-up game doesn't matter anyway. Makako fires a couple rights, gets the single leg takedown, and now he's back in that same position we saw a little bit earlier. John Stump in the guard and Makako. Working the body. Lukaku is amazingly explosive. You saw he was just standing still, threw a big couple of big, hard, heavy rights, and uh, stepped right in, took him down, put him right down on his back. And, and you know, he ended up in his guard, but he, he's just so explosive. He's so quick. You know, if he did had a little bit better habit of passing the guard on the way down, he'd be in a so much better position right now, and he can almost end this fight. Absolutely. Both guys now trying to punch it out. Everybody hitting the midsection now. Makako working the right, his right hand on the left midsection. and. Boris Johnstop actually doing kind of a similar thing on the other side here. Yeah, you know, Boris has got to use his legs a little bit more and get some more separation between him and Makako. He's a little bit too tight right now, so it's causing problems. Oh, nice slam there. How about that? Makako so slick. I mean, he's always thinking of ways to inflict punishment on the ground. That time it looked like he wanted to try to do it again, and that time Johnstop <laughs> just let go of him so he would not get slammed. I have a feeling here it comes again. Oh, no, good job. Put him in the ring post to keep his head up and makes it very difficult for a guy to escape when he's in this position. Moves him right to the corner. This is a bad position for John Stomp, but now he's trying to move away from the position. They continue to work hard here in the second round. John Stomp doing a good job of defense from down here in the bottom. You know, obviously he's been training a little bit more, been a little more versed in submissions than we've seen him, so he's able to start moving around. But Kako not doing a real good job of passing the staying pass. You know, he's got a, he's got a, he's a little better at submissions than this. He should be able to get past this guy here uh, relatively soon and uh, and uh, be able to sit up and start raining down some blows on him. And now he's starting to lean on him. It looks like he's going to try to, uh, I was going to say, it looks like he's maybe going for a front choke, and now he wants to move him away from the ring post. Oh, good job right there. Pushing his head down. It's a good spot to push the guy's head down and start putting some knees on him. And now they're going to stop the action and move it back to the center. Hey, I tell you what, Boris Johnstop has showed a lot of great jobs as far as submission defense goes. He's been in some bad positions, and he's still doing pretty well here in the second round. Yeah, he's doing a really good job. You know, he, I tell you, he's doing, has really good defense. He's still moving. And the thing is, too, he looks like he's still in pretty good shape. He doesn't look tired at all, other than, other than frustrated. You know, if, if he can get by this and get back to his feet, I think we have a pretty good shot of seeing, a, seeing some really high action on their feet from both these guys. All right, back into it here. And Makako just being patient, just looking for his opportunity. 
waiting for that one mistake if he can get it. And now he gets in the full mount. Nice job. Makako now. Now he's going to try to work a choke. And once again, I love what Boris Johnson does. Takes some abuse, gives up his back, then goes right back in the middle again. Now he gives up his back once again. And this time, Makako trying to meet him and trying to get a arm triangle choke, it looks like. Oh, oh man. Wow. He's got sunk pretty deep. Yeah, he does now. Is. Johnstone might be in a little trouble here. Trying to lock in that front choke. Johnstone in a lot of trouble trying to use his arm to help himself out. But now he's that's, that's it. it. Wow. Good, Good job. Good job by Makako. Wow. Makako, amazing, amazing persistence to try to get in there to sneak that self in there. He really did a good job getting that arm triangle put in. Great, great work. Great work by him. So Makako, you can see how strong he is. You can see the technique he uses, which is so effective. <laughs> Look at Boris. He's, he's still feeling this uh, submission, isn't he? Yeah, he looks a little loopy in there. But it's a really good arm triangle. You know, I, I can't tell you, you know, say enough about him because Makako is such a strong guy. Known more for his, for his striking, obviously. And did a great, great job getting this in and sinking in. And, and he is so strong in this position. Unfortunately, I've never had a chance to work out with him, even though I would love to. Everybody that ever has has always told me that he's just an amazingly strong athlete. And, and once you get something in like that, an arm triangle tightening like that, it's very difficult to get out of. Yeah, you see, John Stump, he was very game, but just could not get out of it. Sean and Makako. Your official winner. Tough, 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 uh, maybe a tougher fight than some people expected, because anytime you get a kickboxer against a submission specialist, a lot of people think, you know, it's going it's to be quick, but Boris was very game, but Makako, you, you mentioned the strength. He's got the power, and he gets a win tonight by tap out in Jungle Fight 3. Our next fight has an international flavor, Alessio Sakara from Italy. He's won five of his last seven fights. He actually trains uh, in the Brazilian dojo. Will face a tough Brazilian in his own right, Asurio Silva. And Asurio Silva, I'll tell you what, he's been so impressive in his career. He's kind of revitalized it of sorts. Tough, tough battle in his last fight. But the bottom line, Trig, even though it was a tough battle, he came from behind, and the most important thing, he got that win. Yeah, he did. He did a great job. He was kind of getting beat up a little bit and came after it and sunk in a guillotine choke and did a great job doing it. I mean, he's amazing. You know, a lot of people are trying to say this is beyond his time. I'm telling you right now, he's still in it. He's facing Alessio Sakara. And Sakara, tell you what, he moved to Brazil to try to get a chance to learn from Minotaro Nogueira so he can learn more about submissions. His stand-up game's always been pretty good. He's 7-3, and three and... Has a Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, background, but moved to Brazil to learn even more. He's got a good stance, a good, good, good mind about him, you know. Moves pretty well in there. Nice body shot there, landed by Sicaro. Uh, Osorio comes right back, though, with a pretty good straight right. Alessio Sicaro, part of the Brazilian uh, dojo. From Rome, Italy, originally, and... A veteran of King of the Cage, M1, some other promotions. First time, though, in Jungle Fight. He's actually also a, a European boxing champion, so he's got, he's got some pretty good stand-up as well. Pretty good, well-rounded game. And right now, Asurio Silva is finding that out, taking a couple stiff jabs. You know, it should take a couple seconds. You realize you're not getting by this guy's guard a little bit. Realize you're not getting, uh, not getting through his hands a little bit. You should definitely go ahead and try to, uh, try to take this guy down on the ground and see what his game is like on the bottom. All right, now, uh, yeah, you, you mentioned it. Boy, he's peppering Silva with shots. Wow. Wow, doing a really good job right now. He's you know, hitting him everywhere, head, body, legs. I mean, he's doing a really good job. I think he's surprising him a lot. You saw the face of Asurio Silva. He was just like, wow, this kid's right now taking it to me. Silva, we mentioned it was just a great come from behind win against Fabiano Schirner in his last fight. I mean, he was. In a lot of trouble in that first round, got out of it and actually beat Scherner with a choke, and now he takes down Sakara here. Yeah, a great win for him when he beat Scherner. You know, tapping out the the, the uh, six-time you know world jiu-jitsu ch Brazilian champion uh, with a choke. I mean, that, that's just an amazing feat, an amazing feat, especially after all the punishment he took before that. He set him up. It was an uppercut, and then he landed the choke to uh, to get the win. And He's hoping for his second consecutive win, this time against Alessio Sakara. They continue to work here in the first round. Right now, actually, Silva chooses to stand, misses barely with the high kick. Good idea, it just did not land. Look at the hand. 
hand speed wow. of Sakara. I mean, he is just digging for the body. I'm, I'm very impressed with how he looks early on here. Alessio Sakara looking very good. So he's going to start throwing back in here in these exchanges. He starts getting, uh, getting hit. He can't turtle off. He starts getting hit. He's going to really start throwing back again. Yeah, Surio Silva is going to have to deal with the hand speed of Sakara. Good leg kick there that lands. And like you said, I, I think he might want to end up taking this fight to the ground because Rana Sakara, the European boxing champion, looks very good early on. And you see Silva immediately time up now. Well, the thing is, you know, you know, Sakara's one of the one of the stand up. He's definitely one of the stand up. But Silva's taking him down. You know, he, he got him taken down and got on top of him. So it's, it's going to be very difficult for the judges to decide this round. Yeah, Sakara's got to get get him get himself away right now because he's getting trapped by a Surio Silva, and that's the experience Silva has, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's keeping against the ropes. He's keeping him pushed back. He's making him look like uh, Sakura's not doing anything. And in reality, it's kind of a stalemate, but in judges' mind, he looks back because his back's against the rope. Yeah, Sakara looks so good early on with those shots to the body in this round, but now he's kind of a stalemate. And right now, the referee watching very closely because if Silva doesn't improve his position, then they're going to stand him back up, and that's not where Silva wants. I mean, S Silva had to be shocked by the hands, but you see Sakara trying to get the trip there, couldn't get it. Had to be surprised at the hand speed of Sakara. I know. He's he a guy that spends a lot of time in his top, you know, a lot of, guy, a lot of time in a stand-up game. And he spends a lot of time on top of people, throwing punches. You know, that experience he gets from pro boxing, the experience he gets from amateur boxing is, is really difficult to match in the fight game. But, you know, it, it also isn't as dangerous as it would be for just a boxing match because he still can shoot takedowns. And you see Sakara pushing him off, and this is where he wants to be. Get some separation, some distance. You see the high kick there attempted by Silva. Doesn't land. And, uh, you know, right right now, a serial silva is going to be frustrated because he's tried for some takedowns, couldn't take couldn't take him down. And now, you know, he's, he's been, you know, outstruck so far in this fight. Another jab snaps in there. There's a good combination, finally. And that's, that's the thing Silva's got to wow. do. He's got to get busy. A nice takedown there. Good job. You know, you saw that he turtled up the first time he started punching. Silva threw another another quick three-punch combo. Saw that uh, Sakura turtled up again and immediately stepped in for the takedown. Did a great job. If he gets mounted here, if uh, if uh, Sakura gets mounted here, he can be in a lot of danger here at the end of this first round. We're winding down round one here between Sakara and Silva. Silva continues to work that position in the side control. And right, oh, now he's going for the arm. Oh, wow, he's got this Kimura locked up. He's, if he can get this elbow bent, he can finish this fight right now. Oh, look at that. Serio Silva trying to finish this fight. Oh, he's got the arm back. Sakara still trying to defend. Oh, the bell saves Sakara. Wow. Gee, I tell you what, if there's five or six more seconds in this round, this fight will be over right now. That was locked in deep and tight. Serio Silva, he, and he's upset. <laughs> he knows it. Maybe Sakara knew how much time was left, but bottom line, he, look at Sakara right now. You see what he did? He. Kind of grabbed right under that left pectoral muscle. He's saying he's got a little injury to his, to his either to his lower pec or, or his ribs right there. He, he's a little strange. I don't, I don't remember him getting hit in that position. I don't know uh, if it happened while he was underneath just now that he's kind of strained himself, but th that's kind of a strange spot to get hurt. You wonder if he strained himself trying to defend it. I, I don't know. It's uh, You're right. He, oh, now they're putting ice under there. Wow. He, he did a really good job of defending that Camaro. He sat up all the way up on it, got his arm kind of kind of pulled out a little bit. But yeah, that, that he could have absolutely run. Like you said, he probably could have strained it in there trying to make the defense and gave him a little strain. Yeah, unfortunate for Asurio Silva. We show you the beginning moments of this round, and you see the striking. Sakara basically won the strikes. I thought Silva did a nice job of coming back in that round, and unfortunately for him, could have finished the fight, just did not have any, just didn't have enough time. So here we go, another round for Asurio Silva facing Alessio Sakara. Both guys, we saw a lot of this at the end of the round here. A lot of clinching, a lot of grabbing. Oh, how about that? Sakara showing some strength. Yeah, a little, 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 little powerful of a, of a lateral drop. Wasn't very technical as far as a uh, wrestling power you know, lateral drop goes, but he definitely stepped in and used a lot of power in it and got him down to the ground. It was a good good job, good takedown to be on top now. He's a little bit safer than he is, obviously, than when, when he was in the bottom at the first round. And I think the one thing that shows, when, when you do a power move like that, you can't, you can't be injured. So obviously, whatever problem he was facing at the end of that round, he feels a lot better to, to execute a throw like that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely, that's absolutely true. If you have an injury like that to the ribs, as anybody's had one of those, it's very difficult to kind of do anything. And so obviously, it's not as bad as he thought when uh, the, uh, the other round ended, when the first round ended. Right now, Surio Silva using his guard, and he continues to look for submissions. That's the one thing I like about Surio. He's, he's pretty well-rounded. I mean, he can he can... Launch a submission at any point, any time of a fight. The stand-up game is okay. Likes to stand and bang as well, but 
This is why he's been such an effective fighter. Always well-rounded, well-versed in both. The thing I like about Asuro is that he always ties up his, his, his opponent's power hand. Like, if he's fighting me, I'm left-handed. He's going to tie up my left hand when, he's in, when I'm in his guard. He's tying up Sakura's uh, right hand because he's a right-handed puncher right now. And, and, and he always ties up this guy's power hand so he can't get hit, so there's not big striking coming on. He may get peppered, but he's always looking to tie up that right side. He's always tied up that right side. And he's going to slip in a submission to that right side of the body. So when he does get it attached, you can't do anything to him. He's going to have it locked up, and your power side is being completely shut down. So he does a really good job from the bottom. I really, I really do enjoy watching his skill on the bottom. I've seen some blood off the, uh, looks like the left eye now of Sakara. That blood started to trickle in. I'm trying to see, I can't tell. It looks like the side of the, the head, maybe from the left temple now, blood starting to trickle through. So Silva's starting to impose his will right now on Sakara here. Taking his time, landing those quick rides. Now Sakara's starting to get off here. You know what, Ryan? This is something you see in a lot of the other fight organizations that we've called for. You don't really see a lot of this, where the guy from the bottom is actually taking advantage of the fight, actually turning the tide. Ooh, great guard pass right there uh, by Sakura. Do it. He does a great job in, in, in battling from the bottom, actually winning the fight from the bottom. We don't see a lot of that in a lot of the organizations that we go through. And it's just a testament to Alyssa Silva's ability on the ground. And in the scramble, he's right back in that position we saw a little bit earlier last round, trying to secure Kimura. She's got the arm again. Here he goes. He's trying to execute it. Trick, wow. can he pull it off in this position? Jeez, he absolutely can. He's got to just set him back down to go. He's, let, he's letting him sit up a little. He's letting Sakura sit up. He's got to get him back down to the ground. Or pinch. There he goes. Does a good job pinching his head off with his knees. Man. Keep him from moving. Now he's got the arm bar. Oh, he, oh, he oh tried for it. Now, nice job by Sakara to get out of it. He starts wailing on Silva. Wow. Amazing. Obviously, the training he's, Sakara's been doing with, with uh, Jacques Array is done, doing a great job because he defended three different techniques all at one time to get out and end up on top. Great job. He just was, an amazing, amazing talent. He was in a bad spot, as Trig mentioned. I mean, that was, that was impressive to get out of that combination. I mean, we mentioned the transitions, how skillful Silva really is at it. And he went from that Kimura to an arm bar. And nice job by Sakara to get out of it. And that's the thing I like about uh, the competitions down here. You heard, you saw the submission attempts. You heard the crowd in the background start cheering when they're getting, when the, they're being applied. And you also heard when they got defended out of it. It's, it's just amazing with the knowledge that the people have down here in Brazil about submissions and defense and offense that they, they even cheer. They know what's going on. They love love cheering about it. And that, that was, that we just saw an amazing exchange right there. Absolutely. Very much an educated fan out here in Brazil. The Amazon. Ryan Bennett, Frank Trigg on the Fight Network bringing to you Jungle Fight 3 between two very skilled combatants, Cesario Silva and Alessio Sakara. And now Sakara. Look, he looks tired. I mean, he's just kind of laying on Silva. You mentioned how effective Silva is on his back. I mean, he's been tying him up landed some great shots and, and you look at Sakara, he just looks exhausted. Yeah, it's difficult too when you're a striker, your main your main thing is striking that you, you want to sit up and get some space in this position and start punching. But anytime you start to lift your head, you have this feeling of I might be get caught in a submission at any time. So I gotta be real careful. And Sakura's kinda kinda getting exhausted from expending all of his energy. And right now I just stand up. If I'm if I'm Sakara, I just stand up and throw again. You should be a professional fighter, Ryan. This is exactly what he should do See, at this point. I just play one on TV. I let you beat me up uh, in, in training sessions. I, train a, I, I learn some stuff from you every once in a while, Trig, which is crazy in itself. All right, they continue to battle it out here. The referee's going to stand. Well, actually, I, I thought he was going to stand him up, but he's going to move him to the center of the ring. Yeah, that's a good idea. They're getting ready. There's a lot of action. There's no reason to bring him back up to their feet, but you got to get him back in so at least they can continue to compete. Because, uh, you know, if they slide the ropes, it could be a detriment to either one of these one of these competitors. Great job by the official. So both these guys continue to battle it out here. Not much time left in the round, and Sakara has just stopped. I mean, he's just, you know, we, we, we call this position ground and pound. Some call it lay and pray when you're not doing anything. And right now, Sakara really isn't doing a whole lot. And there's the end of the round. Sakara just, I mean, you see how slow he is getting up. I mean, he is exhausted. He really is tired. It's amazing to see you know, he's able to continue through. Trick, when you're this tired, it affects your striking. If you're known as a striker, you're just not going to have the oomph on your punches. And he's being held up by his corner right now. Yeah, he, he's exhausted. It's, it's amazing to see that uh, that he is getting this tired, but it's just a testament to Alyssa Sylvia how much he's really holding him down, really draining on him. Well, his corner worked on him, and we'll see what he has left here. Third and final round, Sakara and Silva. You saw the Sakara's corner just throwing ice on him, I mean, doing anything they can to try to revive him at this point, but look how easy he goes down there. 
Yeah, he got, uh, he, what happens is when you get tired, you tend to get fall into those baits, and that, that's all Silva was doing, is that he, he knew that uh, if he threw one punch, Sakura's going to try and throw it back, so he threw that one simple punch and ducked underneath and took him right down to the ground. It's just a classic wrestling wrestler's use against a, a guy that's a better striker. You know, this is what makes MMA so tough. It's so different than any other sport. You could come out on fire like Sakara did early. You can look good with your strikes and, and look impressive, but it's another entire game when you have to go three five-minute rounds and a nice job by Sicard to initially get out of under Silva but now Silva has his will and right back where we started you know Sicard has made one simple little small mistake in there when he was getting out and he went back in and tried to attack for the takedown and he, he's not very proficient at takedowns he should have as soon as he got any kind of space at all try to get up and circle away to get himself some space and use his boxing better now you hit it on the head and that's the one thing Sicar and look at Silva work for that arm once again Sakara Sakara's in another bad spot. We saw this at the end of the first round. We saw it in the second round, and now Sakara has to defend it once again. He does. He's done a good job so far, and now wow. you see that arm. I mean, you can just feel how much that hurts when you're looking at home, watching your arm being wrenched back like that. But look at him. Gets out of it again. Wow. Now, let me tell you something. For you guys at home that are that are brand new to the sport, that takes a lot of energy out of you to keep defending these arm bars and, and Kimura attempts like this. If you're already exhausted, come to third round, you have to defend it two and three more times in a round. You're better off. You know, you'd rather be tired on your feet, at least in Sakura's position, than you are being tired on your back having to worry about these submission attempts. He's had to defend a lot of them in this fight. The Surreal Silva just really showing his all-out game, as we mentioned before. He's pretty good standing up. He's and the thing, I want to get back to your point, what you said about Sakara. You know, he's done a good job of, of getting out of these submissions, but there's been times where he should have went back to his feet. You mentioned him shooting in. That, that's not his game. I mean, I know he's tired, but you would think he would want to go his strength. Even, even being tired, his strength is still stand-up. Yeah, absolutely. Your best spot. My best spot's always going to be wrestling. i got to get back to wrestling every time. Oh, great knee bar attempt. Look at the Surio Silva. I mean, he is... Really went for all the submissions, and Sakara once again gets out of it. Wanted to get up, but could not. So it's, it's another case, as, you know, as I was trying to express earlier, Ryan. He needed to back away at that point. He went back and attacked, got taken back down again. He needs to get some separation to use his kickboxing skills to his advantage. You can't be inside with a guy that's a grappler. You're always going to try and stay away. I'm a wrestler. I'm going to wrestle you. Anything happens to me, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrestle. That's my first base. That's my first love. That's what I'm going to do. Sakura's first thing is boxing. He needs to use that to his advantage. He's not using it well enough to his advantage right now. He does a good job of defending submissions, but he's not landed any offense whatsoever in these final two rounds. And, you know, if you're a judge, you might have scored the first round for Sakara, maybe. I mean, it was, it was still pretty close, but he did land some effective strikes. Did do a little damage early on, but right now, it's been all a Surreal Silva in round two, and so far in round three. And you see Silva continue to land those short little elbows to the side now of Sakara. Just another thing to kind of irritate Sakara. Now he's got the mount. And that was just setting up. He kept elbowing, kept reaching for that arm. You know, he's always been caught in, in three Camaros previous to this. He was worrying about his arm. And as soon as he touched his arm, he, he dropped his knee a little bit. And Silva just stepped over it. I mean, that's that's perfect. You know, it, it's 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 amazing to see, you know, how much easier it is to do stuff when the guy's tired. You know, when the guy's exhausted underneath, you put a lot of pressure on him. How much easier it is to, to get motion and to, and to move from position to position. Sakara didn't do a nice job of getting the, uh, the half guard back. And there goes uh, Asurio again, trying to get in that full mount position. And now he's in it. And this is a bad thing for Sakara. Sakara does a nice job of bucking Asurio off him. Nice job there. And that, that's the one thing, you know, Sakara's tired, but he's done a great job of defending everything. Well, here's my point. He, he may think he's tired, but obviously he's enough energy and enough heart, enough determination and desire not to get caught, you know, in... in, in any kind of submission, well, then he should have enough heart, determination, desire then to get back to his feet and get himself in a good position. You may think he's that tired that he can't get up, but he really can. He has enough energy to stop a submission, then you have enough energy to get back to your feet. He just needs to dig down a little bit and get up, because I, I think he can still win this fight if he can get up to his feet and start throwing some of those, those big haymakers that he likes. Yeah, game is so mental. You mentioned it. I mean, so much of this game is mental. And right now, the referee clapping his hands saying, let's get going, guys. Come on now. And a serial silver lands a couple short right hands. Both of these guys working for position in this third and final round between Asurio Silva and Alessio Sakara. Sakara on his back from Italy. Trained a lot on his jiu-jitsu, and we've seen that. I mean, he's got out of a lot of tough submissions tonight. And Asurio Silva really trying to establish himself as one of the best heavyweights in the world, and that will do it. Asurio will help up Alessio. 
Well, he would have if he could have got up. <laughs> Sakara is so tired he can't even get up right now. You know, and that, that's one of the things, guys. I, you know, a new a new fighter always comes to me around and says, "What should I do? What should I do?" And I've told you before in the past. First thing you got to work on is your cardio. You have to be able to go hard for for 15 minutes, and and that's not easy underneath any circumstance, any situation. So, and he just just tonight, uh, Sakura is a lot better than, than what we saw. For our next fight, the main event of the evening, Renato Sobral facing the great Pele. Trick, this could be a great fight. These two, they, they don't like each other. They're ready to bang it out, and this is just a treat for the fans. Yeah, two great warriors getting ready. Oh, look at that stare down. <laughs> <laughs> the intensity in the eyes of Babalu and Pele. These two are ready to go. Two great competitors, and this is going to be a fan fight tonight. This is definitely the fan favorite tonight. Is this going to be the, this event tonight? A buzz all over the world when this two was uh, announced, and right away, look at Babalu get the takedown. And Trigua, you know, the keys to the fight, it's pretty obvious. Babalu wants to keep his thing on the ground, and Pele wants to do this stand and bang. Now, Babalu's no slouch in the stand and bang. You know, he definitely can tie you up and get a couple punches and kicks, and he's not as good as Pele is, but he definitely can uh, definitely get in and get some strikes. You can see right here he's doing a great job using his wrestling ability. And that, that's going to be the big question for Pele is, is, is he strong enough to get out of this position the entire night if, if it goes like that? You know, for Babalu, it's simple. You know, can he keep the fight in the clinch? Can he get can he get Pele down? We're going to find out all those questions tonight. See, Pele's already been taken down once. You see how he's backing away the whole time? He keeps backing up, backing up. He's already worried about getting thrown again when he should be inside here, throwing that big right knee of his right here up the center. Oh, great leg, little leg sweep there. But he needs to start doing some dirty boxing inside here, you know, to get some separation from Babalu because every time he shoots, Babalu's hands come away from his face. Pele has a chance to knock him out. Babalu, you see that? It looked like Pele was going to try to throw a knee there, and, and Babalu waited for it and got the takedown. You know, does a good job. Babalu's got a really good lateral drop, which is that, that technique you saw him right there. And, and every time he lateral drops, he ends up either in half guard or all the way across in the, in the side mount. This is the question. Can Pele get out of this position? Because he obviously wants this to be a stand-up fight. Babalu wants to control Pele the entire fight. And right away, you see... Babalu, the short hammer fist. That's a, been an effective part of his game, as is the body shots. You know, Babalu's doing a great job right now controlling. See how he's got uh, Pele's, Pele's uh, left arm kind of tied up, opens up his body for these body shots, controlling the top and hit him in the head. You know, he's doing a really, really good job. Uh, Babalu's doing a really good job. He's, he's obviously worked a little bit more in his controlling positions on, from, uh, from a jiu-jitsu standpoint. All right, referee's going to move him away from the ropes, bring him to the center of the ring. And that's, uh, you know, Babalu's pleased about that. Now, now Trigg, if you're Pele, what do you got to do to get up from under Babalu? He's got to get his elbow back inside. See, his elbow's on his head. He's got to use that, that left arm to push, push Babalu's head away, not, not let him have it bent towards his face a little bit. He needs to turn his hips, start getting, uh, in this case, he's out to his left. So he needs to turn to his right a little bit and start pushing Babalu away, pushing Babalu away, and trying to sit up um, a little bit to get his legs free. Babalu's so brawl been ranked in the uh, top 10 most of his career in the 205 pound weight class nice shot by Pele to get to his feet nice knees by Babalu though and he, oh wow how about that see now that's experience here's Pele pushing off Babalu Babalu uses the ropes to his advantage just bounces off and gets the takedown yeah uses like a slingshot effect sinks down you know lowers his level and shoots a double a takedown you know, the, and the one thing that uh, I'm very jealous of when it comes to Babalu that he's done something I've never been able to do He's been in the World Games for uh, freestyle wrestling. He's actually on the Brazilian national uh, world team for, uh, for freestyle wrestling. So he, he actually has an incredible experience in wrestling, competing in the international levels on it. And, and he, he's actually really, really good with, uh, with takedown and takedown defense. And a couple of nice rights by Babalu. Some big sledgehammer overhead rights connect on Pele. So, so far, so good for Babalu. Nice start. And he continues to land those right hands. Pele having a tough time defending right now. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Babalu's doing a good job of staying active on top of here. He's not just laying and praying or, or mauling and brawling. He's doing a really good job of doing the classic uh, ground and pound. Very impressive start for Babalu Sobral. Pele right now, he's, got a, he's trying to solve the riddle of how to get from under Babalu. He's had a tough time in this first round. You know, doing excellent work right here. You know, Pele needs to use his arms more. He's just kind of using his hands, trying to use his triceps to push away. He needs to use his hips. He needs to, you know, get his arms inside for a brace, kind of keep uh, to get a little space between him and Babalu, and then use his hips to get away and, and rock back and forth and turn his hips from side to side. You know, and it's tough right now for Pele mentally because he's had a tough stretch here where he, you know, lost to Lee Murray. He's had a few losses in a row, and you know, this is this would be a huge marquee win for him if he can beat Babalu. 
Well, here's the thing. A lot of guys are putting too much pressure on, on fights like this between two great competitors like Babalu and, and Pele. There has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. But you have to come out and show what you can do. You have to make it a great fight. You have to try and leave everything out there in the inside the ring on the canvas as we get a little break here for a mouthpiece. But uh, they, they definitely got to get after it. I mean, and, and even no matter who loses, even if, if Babalu loses, he's still going to be one of the best fighters out there. The same thing with Pele. Pele with a high kick. This is what he wants. Some space to land shots. Got about a minute left in this round here in the first round. Pele's got to be effective here. This is his game. Lands the knee and immediately Babalu shoots in and gets the takedown. You see the strength of Babalu so brawl. You know, he gets in. He took took that uh, took a double leg shot. Pele did a great job of defending a double leg but getting underhooks in. Babalu knew that, you know, saw the underhooks were coming, showed his wrestling technique by stepping up to a bear hug and getting another lateral drop. That's a great shift of position, a great change. You know, Paley's gonna have to gonna have to start worrying about this if he uh, if he keeps letting Babalu inside like that. Man, it's been a great round for Babalu. Now Pele once again gets to his feet, and once oh nice, he gets wow. oh, almost a take down there. But look at how strong Babalu is. Babalu goes for the back. Pele just slips right out. Great position change by Babalu. An incredible job by Pele to keep moving forward. You know, didn't expect him to get that takedown in, but he definitely went after it and and almost almost got that takedown on Babalu. So this is the first time we've. Seen by Babalu on his back, and unfortunately for Pele, that's the end of the round. Between Pele and Babalu, both fighters, always fun. Everyone was a buzz when this matchup was talked about, when it was made. And right now, Babalu and Pele putting on the show for the local fans here in Brazil. You see Pele, he looks tired. Yeah, I got to tell you what, Babalu, he, he has that wrestling background. He does a great job. Is on the you know the uh, the Brazilian I almost said the U.S. the, the Brazilian <laughs> uh, Olympic wrestling team and you know he does he does a great job. You know he, he he leans on you the whole time, makes you carry his weight. So you know he's going to tire you out as this, as this goes later. It's going to be a lot more difficult for Pele. Pele right away runs across the ring and trying to land some of those shots. Left right combination actually landed for Pele and this is what he's got to do. He's got to try to keep his fight standing. He falls down and eats a couple of knees from Babalu. Nice sprawl there by Pele, but once again, Babalu secures that single leg, stayed with it. Well, no, he hasn't. <laughs> I was going to say he, he secured it for, there he goes, and takes him down. He does a great job of hunt, what we call hunting down the takedown. Once he gets a little bit of it, he just keeps hunting it down, keeps stalking, keeps getting into it, finally sucks himself in. He actually had to take three or four shots to make this work, but that's what you have to do. You know, for you, you guys out there that are new to fighting or, or just starting to train in it, you, when you get a little bit of a takedown, you have to keep going after it, keep hunting after it, Especially in that position with a guy like Pele, because if you let go, Pele doesn't give you a knee to the head, and it makes for a really short night on your behalf. Yeah, patience. I mean, you just can't. You got to have it in this game. It's it's hard to say. Yeah, be patient when a guy's <laughs> pounding right, right, and less. But that's what Babalu did. Very patient with that takedown. Now he's where he wants to be. Going to pound the ribs. Continue to work the body of Pele. Try to wear him down even more. I mean. Pele looked very tired, didn't he, after that first round? Yeah, he really did. He's doing a really good job right now, kind of keeping the... Uh, it doesn't look like he's doing much, but he's doing a really good job with his legs and with his arms to, to kind of keep Babalu at bay a little bit so he can't can't get off on him, can't work any submissions. But Pele can't stay here for long. He's got to get off his back, get back up to his feet where he's where he's better. Yeah, right now you see uh, Pele just not having very many answers for Babalu in this position. Remember those small four-ounce gloves, those uh, four-ounce Fairtex gloves are wearing... Not, not a whole lot of ways you can block punches. I mean, when you got those small gloves. It, when they, when your boxing instructor, the kickboxing instructor says you have to keep your defense tight, he really means it with these little gloves on. You got to keep your defense tight. You see a lot of these shots getting through right now on Pele. Just those short hammer fists. And right now, Babalu looked like he was thinking about trying to work for an arm there. But right now, just you see those small punches. I mean, Drake, you know, we watch him, and I think a lot of people at home say, okay, those probably don't hurt. As a fighter, how, how effective are those small little hammer fists? Well, I got to tell you what. Think about getting hit in the head with a hammer from that distance all the time. Because basically, what's happening is he, that this is called a hammer fist. The way Babalu is punching you, it's just like he's swinging a hammer. He's hitting you with his fist, which has been he's been boxing for so long. It's like being hit with a hammer at that little short range. Now it doesn't. The first couple, three, four, ten, don't really bother you. It's the twentieth, the thirtieth, the twenty-fifth one. All of a sudden, you're like, wow, you get your bell's getting rung. You're starting to get hurt. You know, every single one of these score. Plus, the, the thing is too, in the judge's mind, Ryan. This is scoring. Babalu is scoring. Pele is not. So this is, you know, if it goes to a decision, this is how Pele is going to win. Now look at Babalu right now, trying to lock down that arm of Pele. Pele trying to defend it now. You see Babalu, he just continues to work for that arm. He's been very methodical in his approach in the second round. Nice knees on the ground now. A knee to the back of the head. 
And actually, you know, in Jungle Fight, that, 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 that's the interesting part. You got to know the rules because in Pride, that's legal. In Jungle Fight, it's not. Yeah, you can name the head, but not to the back of the head. So that's why he's getting a little, little warning there. There you go. You got you to need the front, not the back of the head, as Trig mentioned. And that's the, the tough part about MMA. There's so many different organizations and there's so many rules that you and I are like, was that okay? Well, no, no, we got to figure out where we're at. Jungle Fight is not legal. Yeah, no, we actually have to go to the rules meetings with the fighters so we can understand what's going on. Bobolo, this has been a dominating round for him. Continues with knees, those hammer fists. Pele needs to get up. He, he finally does. Uh, nice job by Pele, working to his feet finally. Yeah, good job, good job. You know, I like, wow, great axe kick. How about that from Bobolo? Oh, my God. Out of nowhere. I mean, th this has got to be so frustrating for Pele because every time he thinks he's got the fight to his feet, Bobolo does something different. An axe kick that time. Man. A little, little mouse underneath, uh, underneath Babalu's left eye. You know, obviously took some punching, took a couple of knees earlier. Now you can see his eyes starting to swell up. Yeah, you, you mentioned, it. I think it was for that takedown. When, when, he's, yep. when he's, you know, kind of being patient for that takedown. He did take some shots, but he did, did get it. Now he's just being so methodical right now. The good, the good thing about Babalu is he's always aggressive. He's always coming forward, but he's got pretty decent defense. So even when he's getting punched out or kicked out, he's still blocking everything off, getting inside. Does a great job, you know, using his wrestling skills, his ability, and then gets down here on the ground again. He can, you know, he can do a little more ground and pound. This reminds me so much of the the Team Quest style, like a Randy Couture, or Matt Lynn. They're always pushing the action, even when they're down on the ground. They're always doing something, whether it's the short punches, the hammer fist is so effective, and it just continues to score points. Yeah, there's actually almost three styles of fighting now on the ground. You have the the ground and pound, like the Team Quest style that you just mentioned. You have the lay and pray, which is the guy that gets on top, kind of doesn't do anything at all, but just kind of holds you down and makes you look bad. And then you've got the mall and brawl, which is kind of the guy that does a little bit of action, but you really, he never really gets a big hammering shot on you, but he's always squeezing, always putting pressure on you. That kind of wears you out quite a bit. So you have these three different styles. Babalu here, of course, is doing more of the ground and pound. He's definitely trying to end this fight, trying to find a position to you know, start raining blows down. Well, that's the end of the round, and that was a tough, tough round for Pele, a huge round for Babalu. Paley's got to get some more separation. He's got to start moving side to side. Got to start spinning off at angles because Bobo's going to come straight in at him. He has to get step off and try to push Bobo to the side. Give him some quick knees. Give him some quick short jabs. Get him rocked a little bit. And when he drops his defense, you got to light him up. He's going to be prepared to go. You can remember, Paley's old school. He's old fashioned. I mean, the way he dresses, he's wearing the, the basically the bikini briefs as the shorts to fight. I mean, he's old style, which is more of a more of a oh big heavy boxing style, which we can see right there at the beginning of this third round. Uh, that's what he wants to do. He's trying to one shot KO. That's what he wants. A big right hand to hurt Bobaloo, and Bobaloo right now. Look at Bobaloo staying active. I mean, this late in the fight, to, to you know, I mean, look at Payla. Just look at their body types right now. Their bo their body language tells you a lot of how this fight's going right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, see, you can see right there, Payla's starting to open up his shots. Things are starting to get winged. Starting to do really looping punching. Bobaloo's still tight. Still, you know, he's got some unorthodox kicks and what have you in his style, but still, everything's really tight, very well placed. He, he's putting a lot of pressure on Payla. It's getting hard for Payla to handle it. Bobaloo's had so many quality wins in his career, trying to add another one against Pele here in Jungle Fight 3, and he just gets right back to the position he wants to be. And, and right now, mentally, if you're Pele, you just got to wonder if, if getting in this position this early in the third round, if it's kind of broken mentally. Yeah, it's, you know, it's really hard to, to, to get, you know, taken down and then side control, taken down the side control three, four, five times in a fight. I and mean, it takes a lot of energy out of you, too. And, as you can see now, Paley's not even doing anything as he was earlier. He's just blocking the punches, but he's content to stay here. And he needs to, he really needs to work himself back up to his feet so he can get, get some more striking off if he plans on winning this fight. And there he goes again. You see Bablu looking for the left arm of Pele. Like to land a submission here. But in the meantime, he's going to continue with those hammer fists. I mean, okay, you talk about a textbook fight for Bablu. I mean, he, he could not have, you know, dreamt it going any better for him other than finishing the fight than what, what's happened so far with Pele. You know, he's doing a great job. It, it, it's, he's just, it's just showing his domination where, he, where you know, Babalu isn't exceptional in any one area of the fight. He's not just overly, you know, uh, he, you can say, that, oh, he's an amazing submission, he's an amazing boxer, he's an amazing wrestler. What he is is that he's above average in all three positions, so as a result, he's completely dominating. He has looked so impressive, has had so many great wins in his career. You can see why he's ranked right now. In the top 10, the latest uh, edition of the MMAWeekly.com Fighters and Broadcasters poll. You can see that Babalu, right now number eight in the world, continues to climb up those polls. And we'll see if he can continue to do so right now against Pele. Now, this is a big solid win against Pele. Pele's got some, you know, got some great wins himself. This is no slouch of a guy. You know, he's beat a lot of tough, tough competitors uh, throughout, uh, throughout his career. And 
and you know he, nowhere near the end of his career. So this is a huge win. You know, right now Bobble obviously has dominated the first first two rounds entirely, and is already into the third round dominating this one. This is definitely going to put a lot more a lot more uh, people's eye on on the Babalu. You know, I was trying to listen to what he was saying to the referee. He was unhappy about something that that happened. I'm not sure if there's some kind of foul or what happened, but Babalu briefly looked up to the referee and said something, and now he's continuing to work for position here. I mean, Pele's just doing nothing. I mean, he's just laying down right now, just taking a lot of abuse. And now Babalu trying to, he wants to get that full mount. Still, uh, Pele's still in the half guard, it looks like, right, for him, you know, from this position. And look at those hammer fists. I mean, you can just hear those. I mean, those just take their toll. And, and the thing, we mentioned it, Babalu's so active, mm -hmm. he's, he lands these short left hands, and then he goes right to the body of Pele's. He's working the head, he's working the body. You know, this, this is, you got to remember, the whole point of this, of this, of mixed martial arts is to be, it's a sport street fight. It's, it's a safe street fight. It's a way for the fans to see a street fight. It's a way for us to kind of see how a fight would go, you know, in the streets. With a couple of rules and regulations, what have you, but this is basically what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sport street fight. In a real street fight, you don't lay on top of somebody and hold on. You don't just, you know, you don't take a guy down and lay on him and look at him. You get on him and you're active. And this is what, this is what, uh, Babalu is doing. He's being active the entire time. He's always going after. He's always going after. We saw in the fight before this, Alyssa Silva, he was active from the bottom. You can be active even on the bottom, but you're always being active. Babalu's doing a great job being active, getting motion, keeping moving. He's making the, you know, he's making this fight exciting while he's trying to find a way to finish, you know, finish Pele off. And he was trying to get that front choke there. You saw that. I mean, he, he is looking for everything. That's why Babalu's so effective right now. He's, he never stops. I mean, a lot of guys right now, when, when you're winning the fight like you are, some guys, as you mentioned, Trey, will, will take some time off. But, I mean, oh, look at those. I mean, oh, just five straight and more amber fists to the head. I mean, this has just been utter domination from Babalu Sobral. He's doing a great job. You can see Paley getting up slow, starting to move. All of a sudden, his body language is, you know, it's showing. he's showing defeat now. Not only is he being defeated, but he's showing it now as well. Babalu's going to pick up on and start even doing more action. You saw the referee, and that's that's what Babalu was talking about. What happened there, the referee just warned Pele about the point of the elbows. Man, look at Bob. Babalu just continues to pound Pele. And I'm telling you right now, the, the corner needs to watch closely. Because, I mean, look at Pele's face. His eyes are closed. He continues to get a hammer. Babalu continues those short hammer fists. And if you're in the corner right now, Pele, you got to be watching closely because your fighter's not doing anything except taking a ton of abuse. Yeah, that, that's, not, that's no good. Like we said earlier, these are just little small shots, but each one adds up. Each one adds up. He's probably had 100, 150 shots to his head right now. You know, the corners really got to start protecting their fighter if, if Pele doesn't start moving. I mean, I look at his face right now. Pele, I don't even know if he wants to be in there. I mean, and the thing about Pele, there it is. Well, the bell saves him. Pele will never quit. I mean, that's just the yeah. way he is. He, I mean, he is a true warrior. A great fighter, but Babalu has just dominated Pele for three straight rounds. A lot of respect between these two fighters. You see these two, both exhausted, both tired. Actually, Babalu looks like he could go a couple more rounds. <laughs> There's the axe kick we, we mentioned from the second round. And Babalu was just able to take him down the entire fight. Let's go up to the referee and judges. Renato Babalu Sobral. So there he is, dominating Pele for three rounds. Babalu Sobral, your winner tonight. It is time for your top five strikes of the night. And how about Tony D'Souza laying the knees in an impressive win? People, that does not feel good, believe you me. Number four, Sakara. He showed a lot of heart against Asurio Silva in the loss. And then you see Bobby Hoffman just continues those hammer fists for number three. And number two, we also give to Hoffman more knees. That's never good. And your number one strike of the night, Babalu Sabra with the axe kick against Pele. And your fastest fight of the night, well, it didn't last long. All of 31 seconds is Bibiano Fernandez. We're going to show you the entire fight. <laughs> Why not? Because it was only 31 seconds against Luis Figueroa. And we mentioned it, Bibiano Fernandez, very good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and he shows why. Great striking ability. As soon as uh, Figueroa starts uh, turtling up a little bit to protect himself, gets taken down, turns the wrong way, makes the one crucial mistake. Uh, Fernandez gets right on top, throws in that rear naked choke, and it's just a matter of time now at this point before this fight's over. Absolutely. He would have to tap out. Bibiano Fernandez showing you why tonight he was the fastest fight of the night. And as far as the best fight of the night, how about, let's take it back to Sakara and Silva. 
You know, Sakara landed some great body shots early, but Silva, you see the submissions that he was going for throughout this fight. Great, great win for Asurio Silva, our fight of the night. And that wraps up another edition of Jungle Fight 3. Trick, you have a good time? I had a great time. I love being in Manaus. Thanks for having me once again, Ryan. We always do it from the beautiful Amazon. For Frank Trigg, I'm Ryan Bennett. We'll catch you next time for another edition of Jungle Fight.